Welcome everybody, my name is Katrin Prulz and I'm going to present the air conditioning library. My first question is if you can see the presentation now. Yes, perfect. Okay, good. Um, my background is in chemical engineering, um, like Jens, and I received a PhD in thermodynamics. Um, I'm with Modelon since 2008 now. Mm and working on all sorts of uh, applications in process engineering and of course thermodynamics as well. Um, I'm responsible for the air conditioning library now, so if you have any questions on the library, so I would be then the contact person here at Mondelon. I will present the key features and capabilities of the library, go quickly through the library contents and will demonstrate a typical workflow um, when working with the air conditioning library uh, in Daimler. Just a few sentences on the history of this library. It's one of the first uh, products by Modelon and was based initially on validated models that were de developed um, in Hamburg at the Technical University together with Daimler. Um, then Daimola and the air conditioning models were selected as um, as a preferred tool by German OEMs, car manufacturers, in 2003 um, in, a, in a large benchmark process where several tools were compared with each other. Then a um, uh, development phase uh, followed and um, was finished in two 2004 and then the first version of the library was released in December 2004. And it was then used as a standard for a model exchange between the CAN manufacturers and their suppliers in order to use it for a system integration. So this uh, has been one of the, the main applications of the library. Um, in general, this library is as a Modelica library um, with access to uh, almost all source code. Um, it can be used for other applications than just um, automotive air conditioning, uh, any kind of vapor compression cycles um, that are used in all sorts of refrigeration applications. The focus is on automotive air conditioning um, because the type of heat exchanges that are part of the library are the ones you typically use in that area. But the, the principles, the basic principles, the thermodynamic uh, background is, is more, more general and the library could therefore also be used for, for other applications. Um, you can use the models for both transient and steady state simulations and can use the same model for those um, investigations. I will demonstrate that in the example. Um, we have um, a large number of templates that can be used directly and um, adapted to custom needs with um, a few clicks. And the library also contains a large number of different refrigerants that I will list uh, at the end of this presentation. Um, as I mentioned, it is mainly used in automotive um, air conditioning applications, but would also be suitable for residential air conditioning, but also for, for heat pumps application, for example. So it's a base, the same basic thermodynamic principle behind that. Um, uh, it's, it's usually the, the heat exchangers that um, um, are perhaps a little bit different. It depends also on the, on the scale of the process. Mm. Um, the library can be used for um, different, can be used to answer different tasks, for example, um, um, controller design of a system, system integration, um, testing different architectures with uh, different, um, different system architectures with different components and see how they um, work together. Then it could be used for virtual testing if you um, are interested, for example, in fuel consumption by this um, uh, refrigeration part of the system. And you can apply, for example, standard driving cycles as boundary conditions. 
It is also widely used for uh, heat exchanger design studies and we have prepared the models in a way that you can easily apply them, uh, apply model calibration methods to uh, um, adapt and, and modify the components um, to your needs. Um, the library con contains a large number of predefined system and component experiments that you can um, adapt with um, some some few changes to you to to your needs. Then it contains all the components that are required for for these system experiments. Like heat exchangers is a is, is a large part of the library. Then pipes and volumes, some splits and joints to create a pipe network, um, compressors and fans, um, as well as valves and, and flow resistors, resistances, sensors, and then visualizers. Visualizers to, to build, um, to be able to display online uh, some of the most important um, simulation results. Um, an example experiment uh, is given in this slide it's a, a basic vapor compression cycle and I will briefly go through the po process. Um, you start here with a compressor and the working fluid in, th in this case carbon dioxide is compressed and to an elevated pressure. Then it goes through the, the gas cooler since it's a very high pressure it will not condense, it's supercritical. But it cools down, goes through an it internal heat exchanger and then into an expansion valve uh, where it's expanded to uh, the lower pressure level where it enters uh, the evaporator. It's now in the two-phase region and evaporates in the evaporator by um, taking up some heat from the, the, the air flow that goes through it and thus cools down the air. Then it's collected here in the receiver goes back through the internal heat exchanger and back into the compressor here. And uh, while simulating this model, you could see the, the thermodynamic process in this visualizer. And this is a pH diagram for CO2. So this is one of the basic examples that you can run right away in the library. Another one is uh, shown here. It's slightly more complicated because you now have two evaporators one for the yeah in in a car cabin in the for the front and one for the rear so the flow is split up here in two parallel branches and then um combined after the two evaporators and goes into the compressor again and here we have a very typical working fluid R134A which is um still widely used um and that can also be monitored in this pH diagram um, so you you do most of the the user changes in in one component that's called init where you can set all the boundary conditions so everything like uh, initialization and correct parameterization is or already um, done in this model so there are very few places where you where you can have to do sh changes or where you can an enter your own data and of course, you can always add some transient transients on the boundary conditions, as you can see here in these ramp blocks. But this becomes clear when I should demonstrate that in Daimola later on. Then you can take the entire um, refrigeration process and um, include it in a in a system on top of that and um, extend, for example, the air side here. You can see here. Um, the airflow that goes through the evaporator and then some models for the car cabin and uh, some more sophisticated bulk models were added here. Um, <coughs> the library contains a few of these components on the air side, a very basic cabin model and some some components uh, on, on, on the air side like ducts and a fan flow resistances. And the same it's the case for um, for for coolant. So you you have heat exchangers with the refrigerant on one side and coolant on the other side. So you could, for example, combine um, um, 
the uh, yeah the air conditioning part with uh, part of the the coolant loop in in a uh, in a vehicle. Um, it's worth mentioning that um, it's we have a few components on that part of the system, but with this library you cannot build complete loops on the coolant side on the one phase liquid coolant side. Uh, so then you would have to use this, uh, the liquid cooling library. Um, the, at the moment there is no uh, combination possible of these two libraries, but we are working on that. So in, in the future it will also be possible to combine the libraries in a way that you can uh, build a complete thermal management model for, of, of a vehicle. That includes the refrigeration part and then the, the one phase liquid uh, cooling part. Um, the heat exchanger library would then be the library that, that combines the heat exchangers of these um, parts in a stack uh, in, in the front of the car. So the condenser would be, would be part of that stack. Okay, um, I also want to, to show you one of some of the major component test models in the library. We have uh, templates for, for a heat exchanger test bench and uh, compressor test bench. And this is then the starting point for component experiments. If you want to calibrate a certain component with experimental data, and it's very easy to ex replace these components here just with a mouse click with something that you have set up and um, customized. And with these models, um, it's very easy to perform uh, typical design scenarios in steady state, uh, for example, with the FMI add-in for Excel. And you can then easily run multiple simulations, uh, do some uh, uh, optimization and calibration and compare them with measure measurements. Just uh, briefly what su uh, such a template contains. Um, so you, you have, uh, again, a model where you enter all the, the data for this experiment, like the boundary conditions, then the, you can exchange then the, the pre-parameterized um, component. Uh, then you have the boundary conditions there where you can apply additional transients. The, the default is always that the model runs in steady state, but then you can uh, add some transients if you're interested in them. And then you have some sort of a few visualizers here that show you mm, important system variables like uh, the subcooling in this case or the state of the refrigerant out of the component. And then there's also uh, some visualizer that um, displays the temperatures graphically. Um, this slide gives you an, uh, an overview of the heat exchangers that are supported by this library. The main um, main type or the, the most important one is this, is this microtube compact heat exchanger with louvered fins. So we included all the, the geometry um, information for these components and uh, so you can parameterize such a heat exchanger with, um, with geomet geom geometry um, values. And we have them for, for refrigerant and air, which is typically, typically used uh, as evaporators and condensers in such a refrigeration cycle. And then we have the same type for, for coolant and air. Coolant in this case is, uh, is just one phase liquid. And they, they would then be used uh, for radiators and heater cores. Um, these types are also included in the heat exchanger library now. Um, and then another important type is our platex heat exchangers, including this uh, Chevron type. And they are also used for, for refrigerant um, coolant uh, applications. For example, if you want to to use um, um, yeah, the, the refrigeration um, uh, cycle for, for battery cooling, you, you may want to go to uh, um, a secondary fluid and then you need an, um, a heat exchanger that 
transfers then the heat um, from this fluid to the to the refrigerant. And then just one it's very rather simple type is this tube and tube heat exchanger that you can see here to the right. And to a, to a limited ex extent, it's also possible to layer heat exchangers with this library. So you, you may have some a condenser with a condensing uh, section, and then the subcooling section may actually be placed in front of the condensing section in the airflow. So this library can, can handle also these kind of combinations. And also some of the heat exchangers may have uh, several layers in the airflow, like uh, it's typical for, for um, um, evaporators. And so they may not be uh, aligned. So there are some, some ways of uh, um, arranging these. Um, I would just go briefly through these slides that are a little bit more detailed on the on the main components of the library. One one other very important component of such a thermodynamic uh, cycle is of course the compressor, and we have models that um, allow you to specify the characteristics of these compressors in uh, either by characteristic functions or by tables, so the user can enter. Um, yeah, either function coefficients or table data. Um, expansion devices are available um, um, also as a, as algebraic components. So the 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 transient behavior is not so important in these components. So it's the more interesting part is the the flow characteristics. And we have thermostatic expansion valves, wh which are widely used in these applications. Um, they are simply modeled in a simplified manner by using a PI controller that controls uh, superheat. And then we have also some orifice tubes and uh, generic components where you can specify the, the um, resistance by input variables. Um, there's a wide range of fluids that are supported um, by this library. Um, first, the refri refrigerants. Um, besides those that are typical for um, air conditioning applications like R134A, for example, this uh, rather new refrigerant here, um, R1234YF and CO2. There are a lot more that are more typically used in um, yeah, household refrigeration or uh, supermarket refrigeration or even heat pumps. Then on, the, on the coolant side, the pure, pure liquid, we have uh, ethylene glycol mixtures with water and just pure water and also propylene glycol mixture. And then you can also specify your own medium. Moist air is used then on the on the air side, so you can you always take care of um, you, uh, uh, humidity con condensation in uh, evaporators, for example. Yes, I will. If there are um, no questions, I would go proceed to the demonstration in Daimler. But um, I mean, feel free if you to ask if you have any questions already now. is not the case. Um, okay, I will um, demonstrate a common workflow with the library. Um, first, uh, to we will parameterize a component, um, a condenser, with uh, the parameters that are listed here. Then use this component in a, in a test bench, and and then I, I will show you what you can can set there in this this model, and then use that calibrated component in a larger system experiment. And I chose a charge experiment in this case. Okay. 
Um, so I will go to Daimola, over to Daimola. Hmm? Can you see it now? Yes, excellent. Good. Um, so we will uh, first start um, by building our, um, our own um, uh, uh, heat exchanger component, our own condenser. And first of all, I need to create my my um, own workspace to in order to save those components. I have already done it here, and then I select um, a heat exchanger component that I want to to parameterize. In this case, a condenser. Um, I place it in my work workspace. and open the parameter dialog and you can see here now the geometry information is all collected in one uh, record here and I open this and I would like would like to enter now the, the geometry information that I listed in the presentation um, first of all you can you can choose the, the flow scheme through the component so you have the option to have uh, multi-layer heat exchangers here so the refrigerant flows through the heat exchanger like this, and then the air flow is in, in cross flow to this refrigerant flow. Mm. Um, I would the, the the heat exchanger I'm trying to parameterize now is uh, has just one layer <coughs> and four passes. So I uh, edit this flow scheme scheme, and it has four, just one after the other. and each of the passes has five flat tubes. Okay. Um, I just briefly go through this. Then you have uh, the option to specify all the dimensions of the flat tubes. So this is uh, a flat tube with uh, the, the holes here and uh, they can have different shapes. And on the next tab you would specify the air channel with a uh, louvered fins in this case. So you have to enter all sorts of different geometry information. Um, I have already done this. Uh, it would take so much time to enter now all these values. Um, so I click cancel. So I did it with this component here. You can see I modified all these values. Then the next step is to uh, choose a test model for this new heat exchanger and you may have also some data you want to compare it with um, so we choose a condenser test bench inherit from it And then you can simply uh, choose the one you've just created. So I created this condenser X, Y, Z, and X exchange now, the default uh, component. And then you can set boundary conditions in this init component. Some of them are used as actual boundary conditions, some of them are used as initial values. You have the option of choosing um, what kind of boundary conditions you want to set. So default is the mass flow in, the pressure out and the specific enthalpy in. Um, the default is also to um, sim a steady state initialization. And I can show you um, we can see here that we have a 
3.8 degrees of subcooling in the refrigerant out of that uh, component. So that means that we have uh, 3.8 degrees lower than the saturation temperature that is um, related to the pressure of the refrigerant here. So it's um, not so much. Now um, I would like to set the subcooling, then I can choose a different um, option here. And we can see here that uh, 10 degrees were entered as subcool. Um, and if I choose that now and simulate, that I hopefully get 10 degrees here. Yes. And you can see here in this plot the temperatures uh, of the refrigerant in green, the wall temperature and the air temperature. And it's uh, first it's almost constant, that's in the two-phase region, where the temperature remains constant and then go it, it goes down in the, in the subcooling part of the heat exchanger. The quality here in red shows that um, you, you end up with zero, which um, um, is uh, then a complete liquid. Uh, here you can enter transients in the boundary conditions if you want to, but the default is then steady state. You you only need to simulate for um, for the initialization, so I simulate it now for one second, but that's not necessary. So by by just initializing the model, uh, you get the the data point you want. You can you can uh, run very very quick back batch simulations from from the Excel interface, for example. So if you're only interested in steady state. Um, so you may also calibrate the component. There are a few things you can change here. Um, you can choose uh, the heat transfer correlations and the pressure drop correlations both on the refrigerant and the air side. So you get a drop down list with all the options. And then you can also add uh, calibration factors for these heat transfer coefficients and uh, pressure drop. There is also for for the air side, we have also prepared um, a, a correlation where you can do a little bit more sophisticated calibration of a, of a characteristic function, um, the one up here. So then you can, if you have a data for this component and you can then run a little bit more sophisticated calibration. Sometimes it's just enough to uh, adjust these calibration factors. You then um, save your calibrated component. We can assume that I did this with this component and you, you go over to a system model where you want to use this. Um, I copied the charge estimation ex experiment from the package examples saved it in the workspace library and I exchanged the condenser so I have now my calibrated uh, parameterized component in this um, system here. Um, here in the system you also have this uh, init model where you can enter boundary conditions and initial values and you can also cho choose the, the charge, the refrigerant charge of the system. Uh, you have two options, free and fixed charge, and in this case the 400 kilogram per cubic meter uh, are then set at initial time. Um, you can choose different charges, but um, it, you can only choose them in a limited range. But if you want to drive the of if you want to run the system to extreme um, conditions, like with very, very low charge in case you have a leakage, for example, you want to know how that uh, system behaves, then you would um, need to remove the refrigerant more slowly. So in this, this, um, this parameter here, you have a, I think you have a range between, what was it, um, 100 and 500 or something. 
Um, so if you want to go beyond that, you need um, a component that uh, removes or adds the refrigerant, and that is the case in this example. So you have a charger component where you can enter the, the set point that should be reached at some point. And uh, I entered 50 here, and uh, after 10 seconds, it's supposed to start removing refrigerant from the system, um, simulating a leakage. So we can run the system and have a look at what we can see here. So the first 10 seconds it will um, run with a 400 kilogram per cubic meter charge. Up here in the uh, right corner you have the pH diagram for the refrigerant, in this case uh, 134A. And it will soon also show up here. Yeah. So you have the compression here, the condensation here, then expansion. Joining the meeting and the evaporation here. And we are now at 10, and that means now we are slowly removing, slowly removing the refrigerant, and you will then see that the entire process shifts to lower densities. That means uh, uh, it contains less liquid and more gas. You have gas on this side of the two-phase dome and liquid on that. So you will see now that it will, the whole process will shift to to um, a higher gas content and lower pressures. So we're now at 25 seconds. And if you look at the COP, which is the coefficient of performance for this system, you can also see that it will um, go down eventually. So the f efficiency of the system deteriorates dramatically if you lose so much refrigerant. And at the same time, the superheat, so the temperature above the saturation temperature at the evaporator outlet um, goes up. So we can look at um, some key variables. Uh, every component and every system contains a component that's called summary. So if you filter for it, you always get the key variables that are interesting in this context. Um, so if we look at the superheat, for example, it goes up with um, uh, the refrigerant leaving the system. Um, so it still has a few, so no, uh, few spikes here and you always have to keep in mind if you want to have a true um, um, investigation of um, behavior with at different refrigerant charges, you need to perform steady state um, experiments. So you have to run to steady state with each charge in order to to uh, have steady state result points. So this is just a quick quick run, transient run, where you continuously remove some refrigerant. But we can already see here that you get a very high superheating, so the lar a large part of the system is uh, in gas phase with high temperatures and the coefficient of performance goes down by a lot. So this is just an example of what you can do with um, you know, the air conditioning li library, what kind of system investigations are possible. There is, of course, a lot more uh, you could do, which we don't have time to demonstrate now, but I hope that this gave you a little bit you know, an idea how you can work with the library.